Hi everybody, we're back with a Heritage Highlight and joining me today is uh, Matt Dacey, Director of Heritage Hall. Thanks for coming back. Axel. And uh, we have uh, Karen Coca from the Archives and today we're celebrating a major milestone in Mayflinning history mm -hmm. and it deals with all this, uh, this exhibit behind us, Matt, if you want to tell us about that. Axel, this month we are recognizing 50 years ago when Mayo Clinic performed its first CT scan and introduced CT scanning technology to North America. This is the original unit on loan from the Department of Radiology, displayed here in Matthew's Grand Lobby for a short time this month, and then uh, having some recognition activities. Matt, the story of how this particular scanner came to Mayo Clinic okay. is very peculiar, if you would like to uh, recount that. It's a great story of teamwork. The CT scanning modality was invented by an English computer scientist. Mayo Clinic radiologists learned about it, thought there would be promise for our patients if we explored it further. A member of the Mayo staff was sent to England to see the first uh, device of this kind. He reviewed the data, decided that it was indeed uh, very beneficial to patients, and placed an order on the, spot on the spot to have a machine made by hand and sent to America. And then uh, this was produced, shipped over to the U.S., the uh, team came to help assemble it, and the Franciscan sisters uh, made a modification of St. Mary's Hospital to accommodate the device. Mayo administration was supportive, the Board of Governors, senior leaders, as well as our radiology colleagues, all working together urgently to bring this for patients. And do we know uh, how long did it take for the after the order was placed to get the machine here? It was about one year from the uh, in, uh, the order to the creation of the machine and, and bringing it here. And then, of course, the hero of the story is the first patient who uh, be, agreed to consent to this new technology and, and re receive the scan as part of that patient's care experience. Now, Karen, you brought some historical artifacts here that we ordinarily do not get to see. Uh, wh what did you bring us here? Oh, that's right, Axel. This is the actual record book from the Department of Radiology where they recorded the first T CT scan and the name of the patient who received it. So you see number one on June 19, 1973. Um, and normally you would not see any patient information, names, patient numbers, that sort of thing. Um, and Mayo was very protective of that. But in this case, the family of the first patient were really proud to have her information used by mail for education and exhibit purposes. And they signed forms allowing us to display her patient record, the book, and the images we're about to see. Very grateful for that. Yes, we are. The family, very yes. well. And Karen, over here, you actually brought the very first images of that patient, right? Yes, these are the uh, Polaroid views that were taken of the patient's brain. She had a brain tumor, and the first scanner was actually just for head. Uh, and brain images. When you look at these, uh, consider that they're, in today's uh, world, they would be useless because they're so, so, you know, grainy, pixelated. And but back then it was revolutionary. Oh, it was revolutionary because they could not see inside of the brain what was happening because a normal x-ray would not show this kind of detail on the, on the soft tissue. So what they did is they took several different images, they taped it to the folder with medical tape, uh, and they then used it for diagnosis and for treatment planning. And what went into the preservation process? Because these images are now 50 some years old and it took some work to uh, get these preserved so that we can still appreciate them today. And we sent these photographs to the Paul Messier LLC lab in Boston, Massachusetts. He is the leading photograph conservator in the United States um, and is well known for his study of the history of photographs and photographic paper. And what they did was uh, remove the, um, the tape. The adhesive is the main uh, enemy here, although the folder you can see is discolored, it's acidic. Uh, so you're trying to remove the acid that will help or, or will encourage deterioration and also the adhesive. So y you might ask, well, they're still stuck there. What they've done is they've removed the harmful acidic adhesive and replaced it with conservation level adhesive. Um, and then they created this special di display case so that you could see the backs of the photographs and we have a clip of the conservation and you'll see one of the uh, lab technicians at uh, Mr. Messier's lab removing the actual 
label here from the back of the Polaroid. Very meticulous work. Yeah, and she uses a micro spatula and a heat gun with, with very mild heat to loosen the adhesive and then raise it up. And again, then it's reattached using the conservation adhesive. And then down here is the back of the manila file folder showing the patient information. And again, the, the family of, of the, the patient was quite happy that this was a legacy that they could provide um, and something came out of that illness sure. that was positive. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Karen, for sharing that. Thank you. Uh, Matt, thank you for sharing about this exhibit. And uh, there are actually uh, several ways that staff and others can partake in this uh, celebration. Uh, what are some of the ways uh, folks can uh, follow up? There are a variety of ways, actually. We will have this exhibit on display for patients and staff to see while they're present on the Rochester campus during the month of June. We've already posted a film on the Heritage Film uh, website series about our historic movies. It's on history.mayoclinic.org. And there'll also be a History of Medicine Society program on this mi medical milestone also that members of the public can access by a link. Wonderful. Many ways to check out and celebrate this anniversary with Mayo Clinic. Okay. Matt, thank you so much for joining us again. Always fun to talk with you. Thank you, Axel. And uh, thank you for watching.